Well, I want to thank the ladies. I want you to know that when I came on board, we did not have a good board. Kimberly, she literally had my back. She had my arm. And I didn't even know how to get on the Zoom. And we're trying to have meetings. And Kimberly's on. And everybody else on. Where's the vice president? Because I was vice president then. And believe it or not, because of her helping me to grow, when I accepted this role, I'm now your president, thanks to Kimberly, helping me maneuver the things I did not understand. So I want to thank you ladies for sharing your beautiful thoughts and your poems. You know, it's a pleasure to listen to different voices and different styles, and weren't they all different, and weren't they all interesting? Yeah. And that's what makes it yeah. so exciting, so it does it. Well, you know who I am. I've been puttling around here for a couple of days, and I am Barbara Berry. I'm married to Pete and Shane, and I'm AKA Miss Joycine to those in Central Georgia and in Macon. And so we're kind of the tail wagging the dog three days into the convention. <coughs> but I want to thank you poets and writers and lovers of birth from across the nation. On behalf of the members of the Georgia Poetry Society, it is a profound, profound honor to welcome all attendees, both online and in person, in lovely Roswell, Georgia. You know what? Georgia is a state rich in history and literary traditions, and has long been a wellspring of inspiration for artists. Yeah. As we celebrate the beauty of poetry, let us take a moment to appreciate the natural wonders nearby, the tall Georgia pines and the beautiful fragrant white magnolias. This is my painting that's on the cover of my soon to be book and it is a white magnolia. And I hope you'll take time to extend your trip and explore historic Atlanta or the countryside. You know what, Georgians are really proud of the rich cultural history of people who value community, hospitality, spirituality, and creativity. What better way to experience these values than through poetry? So let's take a moment and let's reflect on the history of the Georgia Poetry Society. It was founded in 1947 in Atlanta, Georgia. Our society is dedicated to promoting the same thing you're promoting, the art of poetry, the fostering of community, which is very important, all among poets, writers, and educators. Now, over the years, we've had the privilege of hosting numerous events and programs, just like I've been here and you've been doing. And I'm sure your efforts have been pretty, well, they certainly have been better than a lot of ours, but we're catching up. <laughs> and we have open mic nights. Y'all, I want you to go to the Georgia Poetry Society website. You have to register. We're going to visit. I don't care how far away you live, and I know how far some of you have traveled. We would like for you to join us on third Fridays between 7 and 9. Now, we keep our poems short because we want to hear as many diverse voices as we can hear. So please register. But you know what? I don't want to talk today about the same goals, the challenges we all seem to be facing, that all of our societies have in common. But I'd like to share some unusual accomplishments that I found quite outstanding and did not know. Did you know that the Georgia Poetry Society held the Coca-Cola 1996 Centennial Olympiad Games Poetry Contest? And then they published the poems in an anthology titled Poetry in Motion. Wow, 1996. But moving on, did you know that in 2004, GPS celebrated 25 years of service to poetry in the state of Georgia? Did you know the Georgia Historical Society maintains the archives of our Georgia Poetry Society, and we really appreciate that very much. Did you know that the Georgia Poetry Society 
maintains a cycle of contest and that we publish an annual anthology titled The Reach of Songs. This year, the 2024 Reach of Song was edited by none other than our lovely Hanti Zabo. You heard her read her poems, a new board member. And am I repeating myself or did I tell you that all of the people on my board came off of my open mic series. I literally almost reached through the Zoom and said, please, come on, come on, we need you, you know? You can do it. And one reason why I thought they could do it was this year we instituted something called the buddy system. Raise your hand if you've got a buddy system. This is where I want someone not to be afraid to take a position because they can ask somebody, hey, come on, be my buddy and help me. But guess what? If I move on, you can move up. Mm -hmm. And so that's a nice way to get things training and get things rolling. And then the person stepping up won't be afraid. Well, I want to show you the cover of our Reach of Songs. And you all got what is called one of those crazy things I had never heard of, a QR code. Did you all get it down the <laughs> it? Well, we hope so, because it's going to be a lovely reminder of the time that you have spent here in Roswell, Georgia. Together, all week, y'all, we have been spending time celebrating our love of poetry and the new joy of forming new connections and wonderful new friendships I have already made here. And I love y'all for being so welcoming. Well. Did you know that the reach of songs was because of a certain gentleman by the name of Brian Herbert Reese? You know what? He grew up in rural isolation. The story goes, now you listen, the story goes that he never saw a car until the age of eight or 12. Can you imagine what isolation? But due to his parents' tuberculosis, he had to take increasing responsibility for the family farm. Right here, an Atlanta Journal editor by the name of Ralph McGill and Kentucky writer Jesse Stewart recognized Reese Talents. He won an American Poet Magazine Annual Poetry Award in 1943. And with Stewart's sponsorship, a gentleman, H.B. Dutton, published Reese's first volume of poetry, Ballad of the Bones, and that was in 1945. By 1952, Weiss had been nominated for a Pulitzer Prize poetry for Bow Down in Jericho. In the short decade of his success, we saw before illness, financial insecurity, and loss began to take their toll on him. He was much honored in his home state of Georgia. He served as a poet in residence in both Emory University and Young Harris College. And he was teaching at Young Harris to make ends meet when in fact, depression and illness wore him down. And Reese took his own life on June the 3rd, 1958. Three months shy of his 45th birthday. Now I was at Young Harris. I saw him every day walking around and this was right before graduation. When we received the devastating news, just imagine, imagine being nestled at the foothills of mountains he loved so much. Such a beautiful environment to hear such awful news. Reese had taken his life. It was a profound experience for me and one that has shaped my own appreciation for life, for poetry, its beauty and its power. Now I would like to move on. You know, I've been an artist and been in the art community and here I am, I can't believe I'm here with you wonderful people and you're all so fantastic in what you do. But I had a childhood friend and I wrote for depression. My husband had never heard a poem of mine and my girlfriend and I used to say, well, who's going to go first? And I say, oh, well, it's going to be me because I'm the sickest. Well, before her passing, 
she made me promise to get my poems published. Mm. And if possible, she said, write a book. People need to hear what's coming from your heart and how you mm. feel about life and earth and people and animals and your honesty. You tear down church lives, religious lives, this lies. And she said, do this. So a book is being written. You've seen my posters announcing that it is Poetic Awakenings, and these are the thoughts of me, an inspirational poet. Although Jackie never got to see Poetic Awakenings, the result of her support and her love, and I've talked to some of you, you've had people that have been for you what she was to me. Her impact on my journey and into the life of poetry has just been unforgettable and immeasurable. So I would like to read the back cover of my book and um, as one of my poems, and I'm gonna read it as it is on the back of my book. <clears throat> Dear readers, I'm Barbara Joyce Barry Nashani and AK Miss Joycine. Please join me as I share my unique perspective and experiences through poetry with a voice many describe as raw, honest, transparent, and unvarnished, I courageously, courageously tackle life's tough stuff with compassion, humor, and hope. But before I say more, okay, I need to warn you that some of the poems in chapters eight and nine, unlike most poems that you have read before, they are raw, unflinching, and unapologetic. But that's what makes them, you'll see, powerful. They are as thick as mashed potatoes and as dark as beef gravy. <laughs> My poems in Poetic Awakenings explores the depth of narcissistic relationships. You need to learn about those narcissistic relationships. Racial and female injustices, death, spirituality, humanity, love, and life. Some poems are accompanied by relevant scriptures that serve as a foundation, a sure basis for the truths I'm sharing. But please, ponder these verses again and again, drawing your own conclusions. Saying it like it is, I offer a refreshing and authentic take on the joys and sorrows of life and the human experiences. I don't aim to impart wisdom or guidance. I instead invite you to share in my own journey of self-reflection, discovery, and awakening. Okay? Now I would like to read 